What's going on guys? This is Martyrs Brigade 99 coming to you once again with another session of Dark Souls PvP. Alright guys, we're back at it again with part 2 of the Big Boy series. And in the event that you guys are not familiar, um, we're talking about using a lot of the heavier of strength weapons. Um, like I've said, um, in part one of the series, um, I've definitely done a number of strength build uh, videos, but I didn't really focus on a lot of the larger weapons. And I know that there are a lot of people who are interested in using these weapons, but because they are so slow and oftentimes um, difficult to use, a lot of people just pretty much stick with the dexterity weapons. And I think that's one of the main reasons why there are probably more strength build weapons on Demon Souls than what it appears to be on Dark Souls. All right? Just seems like those strength weapons are just very difficult <coughs> to wield. I would argue that you just need number one more practice, and number two, you need to learn to uh, kind of gauge the timings, right? Because you know, the strength weapons are a little less forgiving with regard to missing attacks. You know, with a lot of dexterity weapons, you can just kind of, you know, throw an attack out there. And if you miss, you know, quick recovery speed. So, um, you're not really likely to be punished for a missed swing. The same cannot necessarily be said. Actually, I can't even say not necessarily. The same cannot be said for a lot of these strength weapons. And as a matter of fact, if you read the description of a lot of them, most of them will say that, you know, I mean, not quoting it word for word, but for the most part, to the extent that you miss an attack, you will be in trouble. All right, so this is my intent to go ahead and showcase uh, a two-part series using a lot of the heaviest weapons. Now, like I said before, um, this video will not feature all of the heavy weapons because I kind of use a halberd in some of the um, video matches but for the most part I'll say probably about 80% of it um, includes the big boy weapons and like I've uh, said in part one the big boy weapons meaning you know that great demon hammer um, this particular weapon and a lot of the other weapons that are I don't know I would say at least 18 units actually I would say at least 16 units because a lot of them are around 16 units all right so this is one weapon that you know I really like but the downside to it in my personal opinion the regular R1 attacks are not really all that strong and that's kind of surprising especially when you see that in the royal wood I mean those things can take like 400 damage from you but I'm thinking that they do that because of the two-part R2 two-handed attack. So, I mean, the way I see it with regard to weapons um, like this, I mean, granted, you know, we like cool, but we also like effectiveness. And I think that's where the balance comes. Because if you notice, um, I mean, just by looking at a lot of my characters, they don't have what I would consider to be a lot of the highest stats, you know. So I kind of like to mix style and coolness along with effectiveness, right? Case in point, my armor set, uh, it has either 53 or 54 boys. And the reason why I don't go for anything more than that is because I like to stay on my toes. I think having anything more than that, for which I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, because actually I do have a black iron build that has 77 poise but for the most part I like to use these builds with exactly like 53 or 54 poise mainly because I like to stay on my toes I don't like to have the false confidence and um, actually the false confidence that a lot of times come with having the 77 plus poise builds think about it how many times have you guys played against someone that you have felt in your heart you were better than but the fact that they can just poise through a lot of your attacks I mean they win whereas if they were more around the 53 poise break right they would have to be more selective and not only would they have to be more selective with regard to their attacks but they would also have to incorporate some of the um, toggle switch escapes 
right? Because even though I do have 53 boys, I still get stunned, which in my personal opinion is a good thing. Now, a lot of people really do not like to get stunned. And the reason why I say it's a good thing is not because I like to get stunned, but it ensures that I am always trying to be proficient in some of these escaping uh, techniques. Right, so I don't like the false confidence, but at the same time, I do like a decent amount of poise. Now, you'll have some of the uh, pros, you know, they'll say, well, I'm, I'm good at 31 poise. Well, that's good for you. I'm not really at that point. But one thing about me, I want to be able to, excuse me, I want to be able to sustain at most one great sword two-hand attack. Now, uh, 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 spamming our one attempt I mean I don't think I should be able to just brush through three or four of those or even you know I shouldn't be able to brush through more than two of those but I think one is good enough you know so I mean and actually some of my builds only have 44 poise case in point all of my female characters for the most part are dressed the same the old characters all have like 44 poise so I know someone would argue, well, I mean, 53 poise is still a comfort zone. Well, that's to the extent that I am playing with my male characters, for which I think, you know, males should be able to sustain more than females. And that's why I have only 44 poise for the females and 53 for the males. But that's just me personally, right? That's just a personal thing. Alright, so we're back at it. Shout out once again to good old Mr. Bushido, right? And actually, I think he was streaming... Um, during this time and I caught up with him and you know he wanted to um, go ahead and have a short fight club so I said hey dude I mean I'll come on down and have some good matches right so a lot of these matches that you will see and uh, either with me versus Bushido or with Bushido in the background and I'm facing invaders that was just during uh, a fight club that we had which is cool and like I said before you know for a lot of you guys that are somewhat new to the game or, you know, for some of you that may have had the game for a little while and you just feel that there is a need for improvement with regard to PvP, I'd like to invite you to um, the Twitch.tv streamers, for which most of the PvP streamers, I can almost guarantee that you will learn a lot from playing against these guys. From my personal opinion, many of them are some of the more... Um, more proficient, I guess I would say. Some of the some of the more proficient at PvP. All right, they're pretty good and pretty advanced with a lot of those techniques. So yeah. Now this uh, particular situation is unfortunate, mainly because I mean that invader kind of came out of nowhere. Right, I actually didn't even know that he was there, and unfortunately, he kind of took out good old. Uh, Thanatos GR. All right. So what do we have here? Another mage. All right. Come on, dude. Okay. So he's not really doing much. And actually, he's not... Okay, so, uh, back to what I was saying. Um, now, one thing that I would say with regard to this build is, um, you know, you really need a lot of patience if you want to experiment with a build like this. And actually, I would say you would need to have a fair amount of patience for any build that uses a lot of the heavier weapons. Right, and I say that because, you know, some of the big boy weapons are not the type, like I've said before, that you can just get in there and do something real quick and be done with it. You know, like what you see a lot of times with katana users and some of these other uh, dexterity weapons. No. You know, these are the type of weapons that you really have to kind of sit back, um, assess your uh, situation and kind of gauge when you need to attack and when you don't. Another good tactic, in my personal opinion, with a lot of these larger weapons, is to try to get a lot of practice with the dead angles. 
right? Dead angles, meaning um, those attack attempts wherein you are unlocking your opponent and attacking. Now, that's something I'm definitely still working on because playing unlocked, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to do. Now, you may notice someone on a video doing it and you may think that because they make it look easy that therefore it is easy this is not the case but I mean I can almost guarantee as with most things the more you practice with it the better you'll get now why would I suggest for someone who use some of the largest weapons to uh, kind of practice with the lock and unlock mainly because if you pay attention to the length of, of a lot of those heavier weapons most of them have a pretty decent reach you know when you're looking at kind of I think it's like the dragon tooth or something like that whatever weapon that is that good old uh, Havel uses I think it's a dragon tooth um, and a lot of those other weapons they have a pretty long reach and as a matter of fact it's not on this build but I have another strength build and that is a full full strength build and uh, when I say full full, I mean it has 58 strength, which is the requirement needed to one hand the small hammer. Now it's not this one, but I do have a build like that. And uh, I mean, a lot of people kind of sleep on that small hammer. And actually, I wish I would have recorded some footage with me using this uh, small hammer because I definitely had some good matches. You know, a lot of people look at that hammer and they're like, come on, dude, I'm going to destroy this guy. But one thing you guys need to understand about that small, small hammer, um, especially when you're doing that rolling R1 ground smash down type of attack, that thing has a huge attack radius. Pretty big, because think about it. Even though the uh, stem of that hammer is relatively thin, the hammer part itself is pretty big right so I mean it's been a number of times where I've played against someone and they may message me back like dude I was nowhere near that and it's like dude I mean you just have to realize that attack radius of that small hammer is pretty wide so I mean I think the next time I kind of showcase some of the big boy weapons I might go ahead and pull out my full strength build um, character right just to uh, showcase a little of that small hammer PvP all right, so I'm getting a little Grave Lord Greatsword action, which is a good weapon to use with the Leo ring. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of information out there. Well, actually, I can't really say information. Misconceptions with regard to weapons that you can... Um, uh, actually, weapons that have the thrust attacks. My suggestion would be... Uh, for anyone to go through the uh, all of the weapons, hopefully you guys may have, um, you know, like maybe a mule character, and just kind of scroll down. And if you notice, they'll have as a description the attack type. Right? Some of it will say strike. Some of it will say regular. Some of it will say thrust. Now, some of the weapons have a regular slash thrust attack. One example is the Claymore, for example. If you notice, it has a regular attack, and it also has the thrust attack. Well, what exactly is the thrust attack with regard to the Claymore? Right, Because a lot of people are under the belief that when you're using the uh, Leo ring, you have to stick with you know, some of the Hallbirds. You know, the Standard Hallbird, Black Knight Hallbird, Gargoyle Hallbird, and uh, the Baldur's Wax Sword. But this is not true. As a matter of fact, it's far from true. Case in point, you know, you have the Claymore that basically has two thrust attacks. One being the one-handed R1 attack. The other being the two-handed rolling R1 attack. Those are both thrust attacks. The one-handed R2 of Solaire's weapon is a thrust attack. Um, the Grave Lord Sword, both the one-handed and the two-handed R2 attack are thrust attacks. So, I mean, for a lot of you guys that are kind of 
interested in the Leo Ring build. I mean, you guys have a wide range of um, um, weapons to select with regard to uh, thrust weapons. Um, another one is the Warhammer, the pickaxe. You know, all most of the halberds. Now, I know some of you guys are under the idea that only the regular halberd are, is a thrust weapon. This is not true. Even the Black Knight halberd. Um, that is actually a counter-attacking weapon with the Leo ring. Uh, even the gargoyle halberd. I know, uh, you know, someone kind of said to me one time, like, dude, no, you can't because it is not a thrusting weapon. Listen, dude, I've been experimenting with this Leo ring for so long that most of the weapons, I think, my experience is pretty qualified to uh, to vouch for. Right. So the, gar the Gargoyle Hallbird, the Black Knight Hallbird, the Standard Hallbird, the Lucerne are all the weapons within the Hallbird class that can be used with the Leo Ring. Right. All right. So enough about that. And actually, um, you know, I know I've touched on it in the past. I really think that the Leo Ring is perfect for a mid-rolling build because I know a lot of these guys you know they're kind of like dude I just cannot rock when well, actually did you guys just see that 746 damage I think that was 746 I know it was damage in the 700s but think about it you know what other build you know what I'm saying could be pretty good with a mid-rolling other than a Leo ring you know um, for a lot of those caster dudes, you know, a lot of those caster dudes, you know, they kind of like speed, so they can kind of zip around you and cast. Um, a lot of these other builds, you know, they just kind of like to zip around you as fast as they can, which is good. But you can basically just kind of sit back and destroy people with that Leo Ring build, <laughs> right? So for a lot of you guys that perhaps you're kind of new to the channel, I have like three videos uh, two with Leo Ring in the title, and one with uh, I think it's like a Battle of the Build series with me versus Shot uh, sixteen oh eight. You know, if you guys are kind of new to the channel, don't really know that much about the Leo Ring, just go ahead and check out um, those three videos. All right, you can see the potential for yourself with regard to the counterattacks benefit with the Leo Ring. All right, so I think this guy is kind of rocking the Leo ring. Either that or he's kind of nervous. And actually, did you guys just see that? 679 with a two-handed R1. That was a counterattack. I got the uh, counterattack bonus. But and the reason why I say that is because he's not really doing anything, right? And, you know, sometimes when these guys just kind of hop around over and over and over again and, you know, without attacking, I don't know if it's that they're new or that they cannot find an opening. You know, I don't really know what's going on with that, but I just figured he wasn't really attacking because he was looking for an opportunity to counterattack. So that's why I assume he had a Leo ring. But, I mean, it is what it is. So we're back at it. And we have good old Thanatos GR once again with his Dwyhander. Now, um, <laughs> speaking of Zweihander, <clears throat> or however way you want to pronounce it, listen guys, for all you uh, hotshot language gurus out there who are trying to correct me on the best way to say this word, listen, I do not speak German, I speak English, right? I was born speaking English. I've never taken any German classes. I know a lot of you hotshots out there think you're qualified, uh, especially even including some of those who does not even speak German themselves. But I know a lot of you guys think you're qualified to correct everybody. Listen, I really don't care if I'm saying it wrong because I understand that it is not my primary language, right? So it is what it is. You call it Zwi, I'll call it Zwei. Some people call it Zwei. Whatever it is, I will call it a Zweihander. <laughs> Right. All right. So we're back at it right into the world of good old Bushido. Right. And we're still kind of participating in the fight clubs. Right. So this is why I am facing another Dark Wraith. 
All right, so I guess that was unintentional right there. This is why he gave me his uh, back so that I can get an attack in return. So, I mean, we're back to square one. All right. So, you know, I've been kind of thinking about what would be my next weapon to experiment with. And I've been kind of reviewing, you know, I uh, went on a long um, journey with the spears. I've been using halberds for a long time. Pretty sure you guys know that to the extent that you're familiar with the channel. Uh, I used the bastard sword and some of the other great swords for an extremely long time, a few months back. Um, I dabble a little bit with the katanas, but I mean, since so many people use katanas, I don't think that would be a weapon that I would really want to experiment with. Uh, obviously, I've experimented for, I'll say probably about two months now, with a lot of the strength build weapons, um, including this particular two-part series to kind of showcase some of the big boy weapons. So, there is um, a particular weapon that, at least I think, is extremely difficult to use right now. Um, the funny thing about it is I'll hear a lot of people say that the weapon is overpowered and how cool it is and all like that. But do I really see a lot of people using it? No. Right? So what I think I'm going to do is take a few weeks to experiment a little bit with the... And here's another one of those words. Right? Either it's pronounced the Murakumo or the Murakumo. I'm going to use a few weeks... As a matter of fact, I'm going to take a few weeks to experiment with that weapon. Because, you know, as much as I've heard about, you know, the potential of it and, you know, the dead angling and what you can do and how swaggish it is and how dangerous it is. Do I really see a lot of people use it? No, I don't. Which is more proof in my mind that regardless of how cool a lot of people may think it is, it is a difficult weapon to use. So I'm going to go ahead and experiment with uh, Murakumo, right, slash Murakumo, however you want to pronounce it, in addition to the Grave Lord Sword, right, because they both have similar movesets. The only difference, for the most part, is that R2, right, so I'm going to be practicing with both. Now, I do anticipate me losing a lot with those particular weapons, but like I said, plenty of times in the past, if you ever want to get good at not only a particular weapon, but also a class of weapons, you're going to go through a period to where you're doing a lot of losing. I mean, just thinking about it, I think it was uh, back in June or July when I was talking about how bad the um, Hallbird is, but if you notice... I would say probably since June or July, I've been using it, right? And this is already November. So that's probably about, actually that's a few months. So I think I'm going to go ahead and make the same uh, time investment with uh, Murakumo and the Grave Lord Sword. Uh, I do know uh, the potential of both, uh, especially the Murakumo. It has an extremely lar large reach, but is super easy to parry. And it's kind of like, the moves, you know, like like the initial swing of it is like so slow and almost predictable. But, you know, like I said before, I think that's probably one of the only weapons that I really haven't given the chance. And I think I'm going to do that. So you guys are going to be seeing a lot more Grave Lord Swords and more Kumo usage within the next few videos. Now, this is not to say that... Um, the next few videos will only feature those two weapons. But what I am saying is I'm going to give a little more time and dedication to, you know, trying to get better with those weapons. All right, so we're back at it. And, I mean, speak of the devil, I am rocking the Rain Lord Sword. And, you know, I'm just trying to get my little arrows in every now and there because even though I may not be able to inflict with actual arrow damage, I can still, um, you know, kind of uh, build up that poison accumulation, which is good. You know, I know a lot of people kind of sleep on the poison, but, you know, just think about it. Um, one minute of being inflicted with poison can inflict, like what was that, 180? 
you know, can reduce your vitality by 180, which is not really all that impressive. But the main reason why I do it is because it's almost like a psychological thing. Think about it. You're fighting an opponent, and you're losing, and you know that you're poisoned. So even though just by looking at the numbers it you know themselves, you're not really losing that much. Just the thought in your mind that your uh, vitality is decreasing is kind of like puts you in a almost pressure type of situation. So yeah, that's one of the, that's another reason because I know a lot of guys say, dude, why don't you learn some of the tricks so that you can hit with more arrows? Well, actually, I'm not really focusing on getting a lot of hits with the arrows. I focus for the most part with building up the poison accumulation. All right, so enough about that. So it looks like we have a high-speed Artorias uh, cosplay. Which is good, and I'm kind of glad he's not using a shield or anything. I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I know whenever I see someone dressed in Artorias armor, I mean, Artorias is just so sweet um, in the game. You know, you just have to, if you're going to wear the armor, you just got to do it right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Flat out. I mean, that character in the game is just so sweet. He's so dangerous that... You wear his armor, just go ahead and rock it the way the character in the game rocks it. <laughs> right? It is the way it is. And I, and I think he was, even though he lost, at least he's doing a good job with it. Well, alright guys, this is pretty much it for the two-part series. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you guys uh, will also be looking forward to the Murakumo or Murakumo slash Gravelord Sword feature. I'm going to be working on that sometime in the near future, and, you know, I kind of have some other... Oh, another thing. I've been thinking about um, showcasing a new game. Uh, Hitman is going to be coming up. You know, like I said before, I'm pretty sure you guys know, I'm not really a gamer, right? But what is it that I like about Hitman? Number one, I played that game, like, years ago, ever since, like, the original PlayStation. Number two, that game is almost like a puzzle, right and games like that kind of keeps me interested because you know it's not just um, completing the objective but that there are many ways to complete the objective and I think that would be a good game to showcase for all of you Hitman fans so I'll be doing that was that next week I think it comes out on the 20th so if you guys are interested just go ahead and you know stay tuned to the channel for some of that all right guys until next time Martyrs Brigade is